right beer braised steak this is a steak you're going to need a bit of bottle for and the bottle in question right now i'm using newcastle brown ale now there's a reason i use uh, english brown ale and that's because it is malty it is quite sweet it's relatively sweet and it isn't hoppy so you need a, a, a beer that isn't over hopped there's a lot of so-called craft beers nowadays that are just simply over hopped as far as i'm concerned it tastes like eating a grapefruit i find uh, this beer i don't really drink newcastle brown ale very often um except when i'm making a video like this but um i do I, I do use it for cooking it's an excellent beer for cooking particularly beef um, and other dark meats the other bottle in question is a little dash of worcestershire sauce i've got two beef braising steaks these are 400 grams 200 grams each of um, beef usually from the chuck end so it needs some cooking i've got two cloves of garlic and the best vegetables for braising beef are onions and carrots so i've got some of those and i'm going to finish this in the slow cooker over here so um, let's get on with sorting out these steaks now first of all your steaks need to be left out for long enough for them to have got to room temperature you don't want to take them cold straight out of the fridge and then slap them straight on on a hot um, frying pan so we're going to seal these off in the frying pan first so for that um, purpose I've got my old trusty cast iron skillet over here and I'm going to get that uh, insanely hot before I, I slap my steaks in it okay to get my braising steaks started I'm just going to use a bit of um, beef dripping you get your steaks onto the hot skillet And all we're trying to achieve here is to get a good bark on them, you know, a good, um, a good browning on them. Again, we have uh, Mr. Paul, Bradley Bennett and Mike and Nancy Abel to thank for the production of this video. Thanks, guys. You're helping keep the lights on around here. Cheers. And at those temperatures, it won't be long before you can simply just lift them and turn them. So as soon as those are sealed nicely on both sides, I'm going to throw them straight into my crock pot, which I've set to high. And then into the same pan goes my onion and carrots. Now I want to fry that until the onions start to become a little translucent. And as they're doing so, they're picking up some of the fond left in the bottom of that pan. Okay, they're starting to catch on the edges. So at this stage, I'm just going to throw in my garlic. And it's only right and proper that the uh, chef should get a drink. So I'm just going to have half a glass of that. I like to pour my beer fast. this slow pouring of beers and tipping it very slowly into a glass goes back to the days when uh, most beers were um, bottle conditioned and they had the yeast at the bottom well modern beers they carry a little bit too much gas so rather than it than eat my mars bar with a wrapper on i tend to expel some of the gases and pour in it there you go. I'm going to put a little bit of that in the dish now. And now the steam has cleared. You can see it's lifted the fond off the bottom and injected a lot of flavour into those vegetables. All right, the next thing I need to do is transfer that across to my crock pot. So to help it lift, I'm just going to put a little bit more of the beer on there. So I'm pouring a little more of the um, brown ale into the pot, into the cast iron skillet, just to help this lift and 
transfer it easily because that is one heavy cast iron skillet. So that goes all goes in there and sits on top just like that and on top of that goes the remainder of my beer which should just about cover the the meat and get everything patted down a bit and into that goes the other bottle a splash it of Worcestershire sauce now dear friends if you're going to leave it overnight turn it to low i'm going to leave this for about three hours so i'm leaving it on high and that will now just continue and cook itself all these caramelized bits will add color to the uh, finished sauce okay we're a couple of uh, hours into the cooking time and everything's kind of nice and soft in there. Just going to get a quick taste. Yum. Yeah, needs salt. So I'm just going to put in some salt. Not too much, just enough. And I also want some black pepper. I particularly like black pepper, I'm putting in quite a lot, but you just put in as much as you like, you know. I'm also going to put in a dash more of Worcestershire sauce. Altogether, I think I've put in about a teaspoon and a half of Worcestershire sauce. Then I'm going to stir it. And then have a taste again, make sure I've got it right. Yep, yeah, that's bang on the money. So I'm just going to put the lid on that and let that cook on for the remainder of the time. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Uh, if you want to help me out with the donation, there's uh, links, uh, donation links below to uh, PayPal, Subscribestar and Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, meanwhile, the thumbs up and the, your comments below help a lot thanks ever so much thanks in advance so i'm well into the cooking time now and um everything's looking really good in there but uh it's at this time that i want to start thickening things up so what i've done is i've mixed a tablespoon of corn flour with some water and tip that into the mix and then stir that in well. Careful not to break up the steak because they are a bit tender at this point. And you stir that in. As you stir it in, it'll start to thicken. But don't stop stirring until it's finished thickening. There's a reason for that. Because you don't want all the corn flour or cornstarch to settle at the bottom of the crock pot. Incidentally, you can do this in a stew pot, just the same. Just have the stew pot on its lowest setting, on the lowest gas or electric mark you've got. Turn it right down and just let it simmer at its lowest point. And then you'll end up with something like a slow cooker. So now that's started to thicken nicely, I'm going to let that carry on cooking for the last hour half hour or so okay we're at the end of the uh, cooking time although you can leave it on low for as long as you like and come back in the morning and that will be very very tender indeed so i'm now just gonna serve that up with some um, potato wedges some mushrooms and some green beans i think Okay, I'm rather anxious to get into this. I'm doing a kind of off-camera taste test. Give that a bit of a... Um, and then we'll have a taste. Mm -mm. 
that's lovely. Mm. The steak's still got a bit of chew left in it. And uh, which I like, it's not just falling apart. But if you like it really tender, just leave it in for another hour. Rather pleased with that. So there we are. I've got some uh, potato wedges, half a tomato, some mushrooms, some French beans. And now let's put the steak out and see how that looks. Oh yes. Lovely. Some more gravy with those lovely vegetables on it. And if I know my brother, he'll want some of that on his potato wedges too. Be a braised steak.